Uh, we've had over 50,000 South Africans sign our petitions to oppose lockdown abuse. We would like to see that number climb. We sort of encourage South Africans to speak out now. I think the worst kind of abuse is making the lockdown permanent after the disaster has already ended. The lockdown is over, or is it? Joining me to discuss the recent announcement by the president regarding the discontinuation of the state of disaster is Gabriel Krauser of the IRR. Gabriel, what did the president say on Monday night and what is the significance of it? The president announced that as of midnight, the state of disaster is terminated. Uh, we at the IRR are delighted by that. Uh, since the end of last year, we had a petition signed up by over 23,000 South Africans to say that the state of disaster must be ended. This was on the back of sort of expert opinion from scientists, as well as the legal analysis that as long as the state of disaster remained in place, there's this parliamentary blind spot in terms of pandemic uh, government management. So that blind spot's been lifted. Parliament will have greater powers of oversight, but the lockdown measures that were supposedly temporary um, are extended. Some of them are extended by 30 days under the Disaster Management Act and unfortunately will become permanent under regulations of the National Health Act, uh, which are currently open for public comment until mid-April. Uh, but if they are put into place, would make permanent a uh, limitation on business capacity, a limitation on place of religious worship capacity, a vaccine pass for outdoor events, and a permanent mask mandate indoors. All right, Gabriel. So still some quite onerous regulations coming down the pipeline. Uh, what do you think will be the risk of this in, in terms of not only the uh, way in which we handle public health crises like COVID, but, but also uh, the potential for bad precedents to be set or for policies that could have adverse uh, unintended consequences? I think the first thing to notice is that uh, obviously South Africa lost 2 million jobs during the pandemic, lockdown management. And unfortunately, very few of those jobs have come back. That puts us in a very different place to countries like India, Turkey, Argentina, Brazil, uh, which had much less job losses and where all of those jobs have bounced back. I think part of the reason for this is that we had such an extraordinarily bad administration of the pandemic and because the lockdown continues. Uh, we have tracked over 20 countries that have lifted the mask mandate in similar viral positions to South Africa. And South Africa is doubling down. Literally, the regulations would make them permanent. Uh, it's, they say, for example, the mask mandate has to stay in place as long as there is a coronavirus around or novel influenza A viruses occur or the TB uh, virus is around in, in the population. That is forever. I think that this sends a signal to investors um, that business-friendly conditions are, are, are not coming back. It sends a signal to ordinary South Africans that even if you're used to um, just seeing people wear the masks under their noses, under their chins, that, that we sort of symbolically bend the knee to government, even if the regulation doesn't make sense, even though scientists like Dr. Glenda Gray and Shabir Mahdi have said, unfortunately, the way we wear masks literally does nothing to reduce transmission and has little to no effect on infection. I think people basically understand that um, and, and, and nevertheless find themselves being forced to do things just because the government says so. That unfortunately sets not just bad business precedents, but really bad precedents for South African democracy. It just turns out to be the case through history that governments that are more afraid of their people tend to perform better. When the shoe's on the other foot, when people are more afraid of their governments and, and they sort of just go along because they're told to do so, even if it doesn't make sense, that usually sets off a slippery slope uh, that's very difficult to reverse. So Gabriel, if as Glenda Gray and Shabir Mahdi have argued that masks do not meaningfully reduce the risk of transmission, then it seems that there's a cogent case there to be made for doing away with mask mandates. And you're the head of campaigns at the IRU have made a submission to the COGTA minister, Dlamini Zuma, uh, asking for evidence to support these restrictions and these, these rules. Uh, if there is no such evidence, then you are saying that 
this regulation should be struck down as irrational. Uh, could you tell us more about the process and, and the submission that you've made to NDZ? All government limitations on freedom must be backed by evidence. We have asked the Cochrane Ministry to provide evidence that its proposed measures are actually going to contain the pandemic after the disaster is officially over in these conditions of very low viral spread of very low deaths and infections and hospitalizations from COVID-19. We have not yet gotten an answer. Part of what's disturbing about this is that the Disaster Management Act requires the ministry in charge to constantly gather information and hold it and disseminate it. Uh, so there's not really no room for either ignorance or for, or for the minister to say, we know, but we can't share this information. Uh, by law, the minister is obliged to have tracked the effectiveness of, for example, mask mandates in South Africa. Um, it's our suspicion that that has not been done. And on this basis alone, uh, firstly, the ministry should be held accountable. And secondly, the mandate should be struck down. Now, this also applies, I think, further down the line to the limits on business restriction, the business restrictions on, on capacity and the vaccine passes. Um, but we're starting with the masks because it's because it's really simple. It's a simple question. We have also submitted a, a PIA application to figure out there was a new regulation in, in February 2022 that effectively allowed people to be arrested for exhibiting uh, symptoms um, of COVID-19 for two days to be detained before magistrate issues a warrant. We have asked how many people have been subject to that extraordinary violation um, of due process. Uh, if it's no one, then it fits with this uh, unfortunate practice of rules being made not to be enforced, but just to sort of puff out uh, a kind of executive authority. Or if it has been enforced, we need to know how many people have had their rights denied in, in, in what strikes me as an unjustifiable way. Uh, these are just two of the moves. Furthermore, we are submitting to uh, Joe Partler, the Minister of Health, uh, our uh, uh, opposition to the National Health Act regulations that will come into effect later in April. And those are really the ones that are going to make this permanent. Um, so it's very important to, to muster our arguments, to base it on the best science, the best international practice, uh, the best legal reasoning of, of how the separation of powers should work and, and how government um, responsiveness to reason uh, needs to be defined and, and implemented. Um, so, so we're cracking away at that. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident that many parties will be uh, not just battling this out in the court of public opinion, uh, but also in the courts uh, of our legal system. Um, I think that's important. But I also think it's really important that South Africans, ordinary South Africans speak out. Uh, we've had over 23,000 South Africans that signed our petition to the president to end the state of disaster. We're delighted that that has happened. Uh, we've had over 50,000 South Africans sign our petitions to oppose lockdown abuse. We would like to see that number climb. We sort of encourage South Africans to speak out now. I think the worst kind of abuse is making the lockdown permanent after the disaster has already ended. Gabriel Krauser, thank you very much. We'll put a link to the Free Your Face campaign, which is being run by the IRR, in the description as well as in the pinned comment. That's it from me, David Ansara. Until next time, take care. 